Okay, today's Thursday. Due to an unfortunate series of events, I couldn't work on the knife last night. Um, so I need to finish it today, which means it's a bit of a rush job now. Um, I'm using my lunch break. Luckily, I'm working from home at the moment. So I'm using my lunch break to try and get the handle done. That way tonight I can do the sheath and sharpen. All right. So the first thing I've done is nip the pins off flush. Um, just makes it easier. It means I don't overheat the glue when I'm trying to grind them back. Um, and now we're just going to use the small wheel and we're going to profile that inside. And then we'll move on to the rest of the handle. Now it should come across in the sound of the grinder, but I'm not sure it will. Um, the speed is a lot lower as I'm doing this. I do not want to generate a heap of heat. It's just going to burn the wood. Uh, you tend to find the end grain here will burn the quickest. Um, so yeah, nice slow speeds while, you, while you're working on the wood. That's why a very real speed grinder is the ideal thing. All right, let's start shaping it. Yeah, you can see I tip it so it's like that against the grinder. That'll help to give me a bit of a swell in the shape. So now it's blended in. So that quarter inch is blended in with this piece here, which was uh, probably about 10 mil, maybe 5 eighths sort of material. Um, have had a little oops and it's gone through my protective tape. So I'm gonna to have to clean that up later on. Okay, for the back, we're angling that way on the grinder. And then as we're coming up, we're flattening it out. So as you can see, it's pretty even along there. Pretty even along there. So you can see that swell that's poking out and that's what we want to achieve. All right, well, I'll go through and do the other side. Now, while I had the platen on and wider belts, I've taken the outside again up to the 240. Uh, so that just needs the 400 to finish it. Um, with each cut, I take a little bit more forward underneath the tape, and that way I know that I'm getting, cleaning up the marks from last time. With the 400, I'll take it a, a bit further and I'll probably end up taking the tape off just so I can fix this damage spot up. If this was a customer knife and I'd done that, I would actually stop for the day, go do something else. Um, unfortunately, it's my knife and I've got to have it ready tomorrow. So I don't have time to stop. All right, so using the scallop belt next. And this is the one, this is the coarsest one of it, uh, which is 120. This is the one that I'll put the final shape on the blade. Everything after that's just polishing up. I just need to soften these edges. Um, I like a little bit of curl underneath at the moment. It's a bit square, it's a bit wide. Um, so I want to soften that back. Um, like I said, soften these edges, round that a bit because that sharp piece of brass is no good. And again, soften over the top. And this is why I don't do that final part of the final part of the flats until after because you might get some inadvertent scratching on those flats again getting that shape in there um, I can come back underneath with a scallop belt which I can't do with a big flat belt even doing it on the slack um, so I can come back in underneath and follow some more organic curves and it just helps with that the comfort of the grip so I'll just go across and just shape this back to where I want it and then smooth it all out hey you can see how that's all nice smooth flows together now um, as opposed to the other side which is still square and blocky uh, you can see 
how much thinner it's become in on this edge. So we've now got a nice tighter grip on the bottom, nice grip on the top. Everything's smoother, pretty. All right, so I'll do the other side and then use the finer belts to polish that off and then clean up the flats. All right, as you can hear, it's raining and as you can see, my roof's leaking as per normal. So we're up to 400 grit on the sides. So we just need to bring the flats up to 400 grit. Um, yeah, today's one of those days where you're not super proud of your work, that's for sure. Uh, that's what you get for rushing. Um, yeah, like I said, I would never do this with a customer knife. I'd, I'd, yeah, but it's something I've got to do today. So let's get it finished. Right, so cover off um, so we can finish blending that top back. And we can now see where we've damaged it. We've got a little bit of damage here. We've got a chunk of damage there. Um, all right, now proper ways to fix it. You can take a little bit of metal off the top and hopefully cut down that path, past that bit. Uh, that is a decent option. Uh, you can hand sand it out. There's a big chunk there, I'm trying to hand sand it out is not going to work too well. Um, I think my best option for today will probably be take a bit of metal down. Uh, didn't really want to thin the blade down, uh, but that's probably going to be my best solution past that. Um, I don't hand sand, so to do it at this stage um, by working the face, I'd have to do it on a grinder and there's way too much chance I'm going to damage bolsters and that sort of thing. So let's get these flats finished and then I'll have to work through here to fix that up. As I said, it's, it's not a proud day, but I try and give you the honesty of what actually happens when I work. For now I'm going to lose the top of that handle because I've got to clean up here and it probably will bleed over a little. Um, so yeah, let's get back to profile grinding and going back to profile grinding at this stage sucks. Okay, there we go. Not sure if you can see it. This Still a slight mark there. Should pick it up when I change up grits. So I grind this back up to 400 again, um, but that's got the majority of it out. Has cleaned it up, but yeah, I hate going and doing stuff like that because, yeah. You know, the old saying is knife makers don't make mistakes, they just make smaller knives. I don't like making smaller knives. Time for what's normally the money shot where I polish up the handle and make it all pretty. Um, this is a pretty plain wood. Uh, it polishes up nice. It it does look good. I'm going to change it up a little this time. I'm going to put some uh, boiled linseed oil straight on before I do my normal wax treatment. Just to hope to darken it up. Just a wee bit. And as I said, I do love this wood. But I just love a wee bit more colour in it. Now we got that all soaked in and sleek and glossy. Okay, remember with linseed oil rags, let them dry. Don't just toss them in the bin. They will spontaneously combust. It is some pretty ferocious stuff. Um, you know, just because a chemical is natural, it doesn't mean it's not dangerous. So yeah, let them dry before you do anything with them never just toss them in a bin because they can spontaneously combust and catch your bin on fire just need to move my coffee out of the way oh look la la farms coffee cup now we get some of the wax paste smooth that on oh, my buffing wheel does contain a lot of 
that are already in there. and pretty and yeah it has picked up a little bit more color i'm thinking it'll pick up some more color over time all right i better get back to work and tonight making the sheath and sharpening it up okay i'm not going to show the whole sheath making because i know this video is getting really long before i even start to edit it and I'll just throw a link in so you can have a look at one of the other ones while I've done it. The last step, of course, is to sharpen up the knife. I do not sharpen before I get to the finish because I don't want to play around with a sharp knife. Um, I'm going to use my Easy Sharp system. Um, really loving this system. I'm actually going to throw an affiliate link down the bottom. Um, the company that I'm going to to do... Uh, the butchering class on the weekend actually sells these things and they sell them through Amazon as well. So I'll throw an affiliate link in. I know it's going to work for the Australian one. Not sure whether I can find an American affiliate link for it. Um, but I'll put at least the Australian one up. I've adjusted my angles a little bit from a normal um, 25 degrees because I want that thicker edge behind this. Uh, and also I've come up to 45 millimeters just to keep everything level. Now, there is a lot of meat on this, so I'm not going to show the whole sharpening, that's for sure. Um, as I said, I want that thick edge behind it. Um, this is primarily a breaking knife, so I want to have that thick edge in, in behind. <laughs> Okay, you can't necessarily see, you might if the camera focuses. There's a fine burr on the edge now. Um, you can feel it for sure, um, but you can't see it. You can see how high that secondary bevel is. It's pretty big uh, because I've got so much meat in behind. Um, and that's part of it being a breaking knife. Something that a knife maker needs to understand is you need to know what edge is gonna suit the job that you're doing. So for this one, it needs that thick edge, which gives you a large secondary bevel. And then much like the grinding, we're gonna work up through the grits. Now the coarse one that I use is about 200. Uh, it's pretty coarse. Uh, now, this combination stone on this side, it's 400 grit. And then I'll use the 600 and then finally finish off with this 1200 and then we'll go inside and strop it. So opposite direction of what I use for the course. And now the scratches all match. They're all going the other way. First groin was that way. Just flip it over. And again, walk, working from the point to the heel. Once we've done that medium grip, change across to the fine grip and work in the other direction from the heel to the point. Lastly, using our super fine, again, opposite direction. The reason I show cutting paper in my videos isn't because it could cut paper. It'd want to be sharp enough to do that. Same as it wants to be sharp enough to shave. You know, if it can't do that, then it's just not good enough. The reason I show the cutting paper is to show how smooth the edge is. If you got any nicks or anything in the edge, 
you end up with it catching in the cut. So there we go, all done. Uh, might see if I can get some footage of it in action on the weekend. But uh, thank you very much everyone for watching and bye for now. One, two, three, four. Stab your right through. Yeah. You bring it back towards yourself. And you'll probably be able to cut through that bed. So you can come around and cut through there, you'll be able to get right through that. Push it right through, that's it. Yep. Do you do many sort of butcher's knives or that's the type of thing you do? Um, butcher's, yeah, kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now yeah, bring that over, just bring the whole thing back and it'll switch snap. Close enough. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And that's just got that bit of bone, so you just yeah, cut down through there. Yeah, that's it. Beautiful. Yeah, that's the one we've got to do it for you. And then you get cut right through. Yeah. Don't hit the stainless steel. No. Yeah. I'll scratch up the stainless steel. Yeah, you, you will. Too. We're not worried about that. It's that way to take your edge off your knife. Right, so roll Won't take the edge off that. No, beautiful. What's it, what is it? Um, that's carbon. Oh, beautiful. 1084. Yeah. And you bend it up. That's over there. Yeah. There you go.